Hey Jamarni, signing in. Welcome to part 13 of the SPS Plus and SML2 Depart from tutorial series. So last tutorial we covered just basically getting a very simple gravity function into our game, which is not yet complete. So, but as we get further, we're going to be using more and more textures. So I figured that we should probably learn how to use sprite sheets. So basically, for those not familiar with what a sprite sheet is, is a sprite sheet is basically, it's a whole bunch of sprites, which, so this here is just one sprite, but all sprite sheet, many sprites, which are, these are actually textures, not sprites. So there's actually a relatively simple one liner that you can use, which is like, you just say the name of your sprite. So ours is snail sprite, should probably get that changed up to like player sprite or something like that. But anyways, and then you just do just dot set scale or not set scale, but just like get wrecked. And basically you say where you basically map it out from there, kind of draw it out of where exactly the sprite is on the sprite, on the sprite sheet. But we're programmers, programmers make programs to do the hard work for them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to take a look at using sprite sheets. So first thing you want to do is you actually just close out your whole project. So now I'll open up Coldbox again. And I'm going to be going a bit faster with these tutorials because now with for C++ anyways, because you guys probably have a good understanding of how C++ works. So we're just going to speed things up a little bit here. So I'll create a new project. So what you want to do, make sure it's console application, go click next and make sure you have C++ checked, click next. And we're going to name this here. We're going to actually, we're going to name it Sprite Mapper because that's what it is to map out where the Sprite is. So Sprite Mapper, and we can create this. I'm going to pop mine on my flash drive. You can put it on wherever you want. Just gonna click next and make leave these all as okay and now i just want to click the little plus button way over in the corner you should see main dots maybe you're gonna to want to open up that so now we want to dynamically link sfml and cold blocks so there's a link to a youtube video i did on that in the description down below be sure you check that video out and follow all the steps in the video because actually linking sfml over to cold blocks and it's it can actually is very confusing it seems like a simple task but it's not so it's actually quite complicated so be sure you check that video, follow all the steps in it, and once you get all that linked over and everything, carry on, and let's start coding. Okay, so now I'm going to actually edit some code. So we're going to want to go after the include is just, we're going to type using name space, and then sf. After that, we're going to want to make some integer variables. So you just type int, and these integers is going to be the win width first, which is just the width of our window. And we're going to set that equal to uh, 700, actually looks pretty good to me. And end that with a semicolon. And then int, we're going to want to go with win height. And just height. And we're going to want to set that equal to 1000 actually. Looks, seems like a good number. And after that, that was about all the integers we're going to need in there. So on the inside of the main function, just make that all look nice. And that's, of course, optional. You don't have to make it look nice like that. You can do it either way it works. I just, for some reason, like to do it this way. But anyways, so we're going to create some integers here. So int x, we don't have to assign anything to them. So just int x semicolon int y semicolon and int then we're gonna actually gonna give a few values to width and height so we're just gonna go width at w for width and that's going to be equal to we're gonna just set it to 50 now and we're gonna create another uh, integer which is uh, you guessed it height and we can set that to 50 for now as well and now we're going to want to make the screen that sfml uses to display everything so to create this little screen all you have to do is just type render window and then this is you this here is calling a class but then we're going to want to assign the variable a name so the name will just be window we can we'll probably know it's the window from that so and then just end that with semicolon actually you do need some parameters in there and then end that with semicolon inside those parameters you're going to need to give it first you're going to let it know that it's using a video mode and open up some more parameters and the parameters you're going to give it here is the wind width so window wind width and you're going to, then you're also going to want to give it win height as well. There we go. And then last but not least here, you can give it the final parameter of the name for your little window. So that's like the little name way up there. So we can just open up some quotations for a string. And we can just name this sprite mapper. Nothing too fancy. And there we go. So now we've got our, rendo, our little window all nicely made. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to load up a texture. So first we want to create excess texture class. So just type texture. And then create a variable name of whatever you want it to be. So I can just actually call this here texture. We're going to be using one texture for this program. So it won't get too confusing. If you would use more than one, it would probably be recommended to keep it more explicit than just texture. Otherwise, it can get confusing. So anyways, and that was semicolon. And then after that, you want to load an actual image to use as a texture. So just like texture load from file. And spelling is important in this from file. 
open up some parameters. The parameters you want to give it is a string. And this is just where it's going to find it. So we'll make a folder called data. And inside that, we'll have another a subfolder called images. Inside that, we are just going to make something called like sprite sheet and dot png. There is very, there's like more than just PNG included for file extensions. You can use JPEG, BMP, there's quite a few. So we're just going to stick with PNG for now. And in that, we'll line with a semicolon. So now we want to turn that texture into a sprite. So I'll just got to access the sprite class again. And we're going to name this here actually our sprite sheet. So sprite and with capital S sheet. And open up some parameters. The parameters we want to give it is the actual texture that's going to be given to the sprite. So, and this here is just texture. There we go. And in the line with semicolon. So now we can actually create our while loop. So which also all I have to do is just go while window dot is, and then capital O, open. So this is just testing to make sure that the window's open. So this is stuff is only gonna happen if the window's open. And then open up some squirrely braces, and then give yourself a little space to work in those squirrely braces. And inside here, we're gonna wanna create another while, little while loop here. So while, Actually, we can actually pull for a quick event. So type event, and then event again, and then that was semicolon. So now while open up some parameters, parameters we give it is the test is going to run to make sure that this loop can be true. So while the window, and then dot pull. So it's pulling for an event. So pull capital E event, and then open up some parameters. Parameters we want to give it is the event, the event little object that we just created there, and then and that. Well, I did already end that. I already did. So then you can open up some squirrely braces again. And inside these squirrely braces, we're just going to create an if statement. So if the event dot type. So this is just saying what type of an event. So we already know it's got an event, which is need to specify. So is equal to, and capital E to actually access just the class event. And then you want to use the an array scope resolution operator, which is just two colons. And what that basically is, it's just a long, complicated thing, just to say that uh, closed, which is what we have here, closed, closed belongs to the event class. That's all it's really saying. So this here is, and then after that, you can open up some more squirrely braces. I say it kind of funny, squirrely braces. I, I don't know how you say it. So finally, if all this logic here is equal to true, we're going to close out the window. So then I'm just going to say window.close. So open up some parameters, and in that line with semicolon. So we're going to compile and run this second, make sure it all works all good, did not work, okay yeah. Instead of video, we want to use mode, so video mode, not just mode, video mode. So if that should go, hopefully a bit more successfully, and now, it did not go very successfully. Ah, uh, um, looks like we're missing some parameters there too, so not too many, okay there was quite a few bugs, but should all run all good now. Okay, opens up. And we've got this little white little window, and it says you cannot open up a file because because the file does not exist currently. So all good, error free. One little glitch that I noticed, not a glitch really, just a kind of a bug, is we got those backwards. We want this to be 700 tall. We want it to be a thousand wide, which is a bit more goes a bit more with the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Okay, so all good. So now what you want to do is you want to go into your folder that has your project located in there. You're gonna to want to create a new folder. So new folder and we're going to want to call this one data and there we go so just call it data inside there we're going to create a subfolder new folder and we're going to call this one images and this is where all four images are going to be located so and then you just want to move a uh, sprite sheet of your choice which i have a sprite sheet somewhere around here from that game that i made a while back the night some more one game if you want to take a look at those videos there's links in the description for that too so i've got the image of my choice here just got pasted in Control c to copy Control v to paste so it's, bit, it's just a PNG file, which looks like this. It's got all my net, little textures all set out there. So all good. So now, can, now if we run the program here again, it should say no problems whatsoever. Uh, yeah, we do have a problem. Okay, that's right. I forgot to name it. So we got to go back to our images folder and we got to rename this. Rename it was a sprite sheet we said it was. So sprite sheet. Or I could rename it in the code, but sprite sheet sounds good in here. So actually all good. So close this out and try compiling one last time and it says all good white little screen just like how we like it okay okay got all that out of the way so got basically a little mainframe of code here so now we're going to go into the while app.is open loop 
inside here we're going to want to go make sure this inside the wall app is open loop so inside here we just want to type window and then dot clear so this will clear of any sprites we'll open up some parameters and that with semicolon and then you just want to go window dot display so this then will display any new sprites or anything on the screen so there you go so now we can actually draw our sprite so we're going to draw our sprite we want to draw right after it clears so right here and then we'll just name it which is sprite sheet and then dot draw or actually it's you gotta go the other way around you gotta use the window to draw so window dot draw and then you just got as a parameter tell window what it's going to be drawing in parameters so parameters that's going to be sprite sheet there you go and that line with semicolon and should draw it out all good compile and run okay so our window is opening up all good we can see we've got our sprite displaying exactly how it should so now what we want to do is this is actually it would be way too small to actually draw where exactly or exactly little rectangle here so we're going to want to zoom in a little so to zoom in we're just going to resize the actual texture or actually the sprite we're just going to look at a sprite sheet and then dot scale and open its parameters and the parameters we want to give it how much you're going to scale so we're going to scale by something like seven and seven so end that line with a semicolon always gotta have your semicolons with c++ save it compile and run and we should have it zoomed in We'll take a look and yep we, so we've got way zoomed in here so this might not look like much right now but it's going to eventually turn into it so it's basically you have two sets of controls to tr basically bring this little square around the sprite then you hit enter and it tells you the exact location of the sprite on the sprite sheet and exactly how big it is this way it takes a lot of the guesswork because it, it can be a real pain to actually try and figure out exactly where it is on the sprite sheet so this is going to speed up the whole process of that. I use these little mappers here all the time when I'm programming in game development. So if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, or comments about C++, leave that down in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing, and I'll be seeing you next video. Each Mario.